Donuts. Hello, and welcome to the Dolls, Dolls and Donuts. Donuts podcast, episode 52. In today's episode, we'll cover what's going on in the animal rights community and what's been happening in Robin's vegan dollhouse. So it's March, March, which is... Top of the morning (laughs) to you. I love, everyone loved my, my, I almost said Elvis, Irish impression at the end of the last episode. Mm Mm-hmm. And since it's kind of an Irish-themed month... When is it? The 17th? Yeah. March 17th? 17th? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Since this month has a St. Patrick's Day, we thought that we could (laughs) start our episode... By introducing you to an actual Irish person. Who has been on the podcast before. He co-hosted <laughs> with me once. When Along, you were, oh yeah. you were I, I don't sorry. know, you couldn't be on it for one reason or another. I can't remember. And we did it at home together. So he has been on it. So if anybody before. has been a long time but it, listener. That was a pretty early one, I think. Yeah. Might have been years ago. I'm going to say like 11. I'm going to throw it out there. I don't know if that's correct. Number 11. Yeah, maybe. Um, but. Yeah. So, okay, so what do our listeners want to know about St. Patrick's Day? Number one, so is St. Patrick's Day a day that is also celebrated in Ireland or just in America? It is celebrated, but, like, everything... This is my husband, Matt, by the way. Hi. We didn't say that. <laughs> Was this some random... I mean, just, like, Irish wanted on the street corner, and then some guy came up to us and brought him <laughs> into Robin's house? No. You actually should have done that. Well, that's what I did when I tried to meet him, but not you, right now. You, you <laughs> should have got some entertaining results. Um, what do the American? Or what does the Irish think of the Americans? Or, what, what was the question? Do you, again? Still, do you celebrate it as crazy as we do? I don't no, think. No, so. no, no. Do you no. celebrate it? Is we, it a day? It is celebrated. It is considered like a day, mm-hmm. right? But like most things, Americans do. It's overblown and it's crazy, and you are dying rivers green and dying beer. Green. Like, we would never do that nonsense. Okay, so then follow up question: Is anything green on St. Patrick's Day in Ireland, or is Maybe that like thing we Our passports are green. <laughs> are they <laughs> no we, we so like it's a fairly common here's the thing right anywhere you go in the world you go into an irish bar there's like trinkets that are green and stuff all over the place okay. we don't really it's not to the same extent like you'll find folks in the bar at five o'clock in the evening on st patrick's day but then again you'll find folks in the bar at five o'clock in the evening the day before and the day after st patrick's day <laughs> it's not really considered it, like we obviously observe it as a day. It is considered, oh, it's St. Paddy's Day. That's great. Everything, all right. But in America, you just go all in for it. You are dying rivers green. You are walking around with leprechauns and stuff on you. Like, <laughs> you just tear the arse out of it, as we would say back home. Like, you Americans, the thing with you is everything is done massive, right? Yeah, we do. Any yeah. excuse for an ease of, oh, sorry, any excuse for a party, rather. Of course. Okay, so what you're saying is that you guys are luscious every day and we're only luscious on St. Patrick's Day. No, you are luscious all the time anyway. But no, (laughs) in Ireland, it's obviously very much ingrained into our culture is the concept of that. Drunkenness? Yes. (laughs) Okay. And and mischief. And the other thing as well is like, I have to admit, it is a wee bit funny when on St. Patrick's Day, you walk into, you know, wherever it is and people are running around with ginger beards on and leprechaun hats and... It, it almost, Everybody, I'm Irish. I'm, like my brother's sisters, cousins, half niece, daughters was once in Ireland for five minutes. I'm Irish. <laughs> oh, Jesus wept. Right? Yeah, I'm. I'm 0. 0.5 Irish. I am Irish. Are I'm, I'm are Irish leprechauns too. real? There's um, some short people. Maybe some short people <laughs> in Ireland. They're no, not the tallest people in the world. It is interesting for me to note, though. Like, see, whenever you come over here, everyone talks about oh, the Americans and the Irish have this special relationship. See, when I was going through immigration, there was no special relationship with <laughs> the Irish then. <laughs> because you're too tall, so they knew you weren't really a leprechaun. That's exactly what it was. And I also don't drink, which is why they threw me out of Ireland. Yeah, <laughs> that makes sense. They said, no, he's, he's out, done, get out. Yeah. And so when, you, when people here find out that you're Irish and you don't drink, is it like a shock? I've yeah, had, people... Had, yeah, Go I've ahead. had grown it's... men cry in front of me. <laughs> no, seriously, genuinely, I've literally yeah. had people look at me and people will respond. Grown yeah. emotionally, yeah, <laughs> like, like raw human men going like wanted to have a drink with an Irish guy, and whenever you say to them, "I'll have a Lacroix," <laughs> <laughs> they're just like, "Oh," they're like, "Oh," dreams know. crushed. But I know I have a good story about St. Patrick's Day. When right. we were in college, our friend Chris, <laughs> <laughs> they were of course like we we're in college, so like everybody's having a St. Patrick's Day party. And our friend Chris called him and said, hey, man, like, I'm going to St. Patrick's Day party. Can I borrow? Do you have a kilt I can borrow? And Matt's like, well, I would if I was Scottish. I <laughs> don't wear kilts. That's a different, that's a different 
country <laughs> and a different culture that are, I guess, like, yeah, are located close to each other. Uh, but yeah, people, you'll see people running around in kilts and stuff. Uh, which which is understand. really funny to me because Americans think that kilts are Irish, right? It's not. Americans don't know the difference between Scottish and Irish. They're two fundamentally different things, all right? Yeah. And, and like they think that a kilt and bagpipes mm-hmm. is Irish. It's not. You try to find some Irish fella to wear a skirt. No, it's just, <laughs> it, it, no, it's it's just. Are the accents similar? The accents. They're they're. I mean, I guess. I mean, I don't I, say accents like you don't think you have an accent. I don't have an accent. <laughs> you you all sound funny to me. I don't have an. No, the Scottish I mean, accent. I, I, I could definitely tell. I can definitely tell the difference between an Irish accent and, oh, Scot- yeah, yeah. and a Scottish accent. But would I? An average to tell American. You yeah, you definitely would be able to. Tell you that. might. Yeah. Well. Yeah. It depends what part of Ireland, what part of Scotland, too. You, you do Some understand, like, others. my accent has thinned out over the years living amongst you. <laughs> like, back home, there are times when it, it just literally sounds like you're getting shouted at. Like, it just sounds... It just runs, like, it's, yeah, and the it's Scottish is nothing. almost, in some cases, even thicker. It, it, Scottish is thicker, it's, I would it's, say. It's, it's like, you know... It's more guttural than Irish, I would say. And there's very few things more guttural than Irish. But I'm also from Belfast. Right, so there's a very lilting tone that comes from the it's south. Different, yeah. The Belfast, where I'm from, sounds like everything sounds like a threat. Yeah, like, like ser- the normal, like the traditional Irish accent that an American would hear or oh, would Jesus. would igno- like notice mm. would be Dublin. Yeah, 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 which is different, very different from. Oh, his Happy accent. St Patrick's Day too. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's like right? Dublin. Whereas Belfast is like, Happy oh, Patrick's Day. You know, yeah. it's, it sounds very way, different. Very, very, very different. Oh, so Dublin is more like happy, yes, it's more, it's more deadly D. It's the Disneyification of yeah, what, it's it what like Americans this. think of Irish people as. If you did an Irish impression, yeah. like, like I did horribly, <laughs> that's <laughs> your top of the morning. That would be like a Dublin accent. Aye. Now, I could do an Irish, well, I don't know if I could, I mean, I was not say Irish, a Belfast. Belfast one, but it would just be saying Northern Irish things. In a bell, I mean, in a Dublin accent, well, <laughs> probably. I, I, yeah, about ya. I, well, that doesn't sound nice. But I, that's that's a Northern Irish. I actually want, since you have dragged me onto this podcast thing, I want you to do a Northern Irish accent. Well, you have to help her though. What is a Northern one? Where you're it's from? Different. Yeah. From yes, Belfast? it's what I've been talking to you for okay. the past ten years, <laughs> or seven years, or however long we've known. Well, you. give her something to say. That's say, Irish. Something to say, say uh, get in here. Your dinner's gonna get cold. You just said it. No, give her like an Irishism. Like a Northern Irishism. All right. So, for example, one of the things we would say to each other would be, instead of, hello, how you doing? We would say, all right, what about you? All right, what about you? That's not bad. You guys are a little Canadian, but yeah. I hang out with Kimmy too much. Let's try it one more time with uh, maple syrup. Without maple syrup? I don't want to do anything without maple syrup. All right. All right. All right. All right. right. What about you? What about you? There you go, Dairy Girls. See? Yeah. So Dairy Girls. Yeah, you could just move to Dairy perfect. right now. Yeah, exactly. Remember you told me you, you were like, oh, you need to watch the show Dairy yes. Girls, and I was like, I've been watching so it for obsessed. 24 years. Back <laughs> like, but no, but seriously, like that's what they sound like back home. Okay, cool. Yeah. Okay. Um. So my final question. You only asked me one. Do you? <laughs> exactly, and that was 10 minutes ago. <laughs> um, we're fairly verbose. My- all of you? Aye, a lot of us. Never let the truth get in the way of a true story. A good story. Or a good um, story, really. Yeah. <laughs> do, do people in Belfast, let's just focus on Belfast since right. that's what you're that's familiar my, with. That's my area of expertise. Do people in Belfast eat anything special on St. Patrick's Day? No. Okay. So all of that, so basically everything we do on St. Patrick's Day is us just trying to be as Irish as possible on one day, but it's stuff that you do normally every day. And I don't know where he's got it from. Like, we don't do <laughs> like corned beef like and cabbage. The, yeah, like the food thing. Like, oh, we really? don't, no, no, seriously. Like, all that stuff that Jews do in America, it's not... It's, is, wait, is it just Belfast that doesn't do corned beef and cabbage? No, no, no. Like, it's Ireland. Oh. It's Ireland. Okay, so we made that part up. I actually, like, did a bit of pre-work, and I... I put together a list in my head of all of the traditional Irish dishes. Okay, let's hear it. All right, so there's Chinese takeout. <laughs> there's Indian curry. And we have all those. There's cheesy chip, gravy chip, garlic chip, Wait, cheesy garlic chip. Are these kind of potatoes or kind yeah, of fries? Chi- yeah, fries. Sorry, we, we okay. refer to fries in Ireland as chips. Okay, but, chips as crisps. But but okay, got it. Yes, so beans so like But <laughs> we do we don't yeah, same, like yeah, say same. the whole thing. We say chip, right? Okay, just and you chip. go into a chip shop and you say. There's two sizes, right? There's a big chip and a small chip. <laughs> okay. So you walk in and have a big chip. 
Okay, so or when you when you mention all the kind of chips, these uh, are fries with like stuff drizzled on top. Drizzled is a very romantic way of putting it. <laughs> basically, basically, you go into uh, romantic drizzles. That's what her name is. Ro- <laughs> romantic drizzles. Basically, you go into a fish, you go into a chip shop at two o'clock in the morning. You've been in the bar, etc. You walk in and you say, "I'll have a big curry chip or a big che- uh, cheesy chip of garlic, right?" And what they'll do is they'll they'll, so they'll haul the chips out of the pot, out of the thing, uh-huh. throw it into a, into a, into a box. Uh-huh. They chuck a bit of cheese in the top, and then they'll get the squirter, right, yeah. which is the big bottle with the garlic. Like over the top of it. That sounds so great. And then you, you is the cheese melted like nacho cheese, uh, or do they melt it? It melts, off and then they it melts from the heat. It melts the, from the heat of the fries. Right? Okay. And let me tell you, something. that would never happen with vegan cheese. Go ahead. No, no, it wouldn't. It was, it was a disaster. But the worst is when I was. I remember one night I was. We were out, and this fella we had cheesy garlic chips and went in my car on the way home. Somebody left the cheesy garlic chip half eaten in the back seat of my car. Mm. And I got up the next morning to go to work, and I got in the car. And the smell from that cheesy garlic chip would have, it would have knocked you like it was rough. And I drove down the highway, freezing outside with all the windows down to try and get the smell of cheesy garlic chip out of the car. Yeah, it was gross. But that's traditional Irish cuisine. Okay, uh, is loaded fries. Lo- loaded fries, which are very trending right now. And kebabs, we enjoy a good kebab. Okay, like a, a, a doner kebab. That's a very but it's just every it's just nothing that's actually Irish basically. Yeah. I see and chicken kuzhons. Besides the the. The potatoes. What is that? It's, a chicken, it's chicken tenders. Chicken tender. Oh, they, they okay. Make so guardian yeah, chicken fingers. Yeah, would be chicken appropriate. finger, chicken tenders, and they have to they call it that. For we used okay. to when I was in school, right? We used to, when you were sixteen, you were allowed to go out of the school grounds to get a bit of food for lunch, and we went to this place called Hot Stuff. Which was a like a, a takeout place, right? Oh, was it? That's not what I was thinking it was. <laughs> you, thought it, you thought it was something else, didn't you? I thought it was something else. Uh, of course you did, <laughs> and you're the one that accused anyway. Regardless, so we, we were we would go over there, and they had this for two pound, you could get a school special, right? And it was a bop, and a bop in Ireland is a bun, a, a bun, hamburger bun, okay. right? So you get your bop, mm-hmm. lettuce, mayonnaise, two chicken strips, chicken mm-hmm. cujones, chips. And they didn't ask you what flavour of drink you wanted. They said, what colour of drink do you want? Know, and like it was Kool-Aid. No, like blue. It was freaking blue. Mm-hmm. And this place was foul. Like, But anyway, this was... It was what? Foul. 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 Got Bad. it. Okay. Rough. Yes. Grim. Got it. I Dodgy. understand foul. I just <laughs> wanted to know that that was the foul. one you were using. <laughs> so th- this is more or less just sort of traditional Irish cuisine is what I'm explaining here. I mean, a I'm, chicken sandwich with fries in it sounds amazing. There, there I is, approve. If I'm giving you a serious answer, my grandmother, who was a wonderful lady, used to make this amazing stew, right? Which is mm-hmm. potatoes gravy. It is like shepherd's okay. pie and Irish Cots, stew. Like do they have mashed potatoes, potatoes on top? Uh, no, you do it with whole potatoes, but they're boiled to a point where they're soft. My mother, incredible cook, like does this amazing stew using her mother's recipe and stuff. But that was what I grew up eating was Irish stew, and it was amazing. Can like, you get me this recipe? Aye, I will. Yeah? I'll, I'll give Mo, if you're listening. Uh, She's a listener. Right. She's a listener. That's why I'm on my best behavior. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get her to... I'm never on my best behavior, and I know your mom listens. No, I know. There's times I listen back, and I'm like, oh, Christ, she's going to hear Ashley say <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but I'll get my mother to. She, yep. My mum is the most amazing. She is very good. Like just fin- like and anything okay. we we grew up eating, like her lasagna, her shepherd's, but she makes vegan. Okay, right? cool. She's a fantastic cook, and she needs to get her self over here to make me a bit of food because you know the freezer's looking empty as it is. Well, maybe I can make us something on St. Patrick's Day if you get me the recipe in time. That'd be amazing. Okay. Can you do like a traditional Northern Irish cuisine though and like go and get Chinese takers the night before? <laughs> stick in the fridge. We want authenticity. Okay, that's all, that's Robin. Yeah. Does merit count? No, it's too that's nice. Too nice. <laughs> There's not enough not enough grace on top of it. I don't think you understand. <laughs> the health, yeah, the Northern, health code's too high there. Like the health grade is too, we don't too high. Bother with things as 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 sort of uh, detailed as health standards. <laughs> Actually, yeah. we they, we do have the thing on the door that says health rating out of five. Yeah. And remember yeah, we, one time we left somewhere and we didn't notice until we left it. It was a three out no, of five. No, wasn't it? It was a two. It was a, some curry shop. I don't think it was that it was, a, it was a curry shop in London. It was. Let yeah, me tell you. I but we didn't see it until we left. Day. I was like, yeah, I'm a little nervous, but it was in London. Yeah. Right. Anyway. Well, well that do use with the details. Yes, and I go thank and help you. Have at Home Depot. Yes, thank yeah, you. you are excused to visit the, the, the manly men may go to Home Depot. <laughs> I know, like the two least manly men in the entire world walking around. That's okay. Who needs a manly man? Go away. Yeah. All right. Okay. Thank you for all your Irish knowledge. Oh. Top, Top of the, of the morning, morning to you. <laughs>
You know how we say cheers in Ireland? Cheers? Slancha. Slancha, yeah. I was oh. going to say slante. Slancha. That's what I was going to say. Slancha? Slancha. Oh, okay. Slancha. But you it say sounds... cheer. You say cheer constantly. You don't say slancha. Well, no. We would say, like, you, che- you cheers personally. would be the end of a sentence, right? Oh, would you mind doing that? I cheers. Thanks very much. Right? Thank you. Instead of the Cheers thank would be thank you. you. Yeah. But yeah. if you're having a drink and someone says, what's cheers in Irish? They would go cheers. I would say slancha. Okay. Just because. Aaron go bra. <laughs> <laughs> I know that. It means that Ireland one? forever, right? It does. Yeah. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Now you know what to make for St. Patrick's Day. Either get Chinese So basically you can eat anything, really. <laughs> make fries and put stuff on top. Or make a chicken sandwich with fries in it. Chicken coujons. <laughs> yeah. <that>. Coujons. <laughs> I'm not great at it. I have had 12 years of practice on the Northern Irish accent. Yeah. Have you been really practicing, though? No. Yeah, exactly. Just osmosis that comes have, seeping in yeah, without my consent. <laughs> 12 years of maybe studying, but not practice. Yeah, it's an immersive language program when <laughs> you're over there sometimes. <laughs> but even, like, recently, like, I was like, we were over there or when we were at home. I can't remember because his accent does get thicker when we go home. Mm-hmm. I mean, when we go to his home mm-hmm. to Ireland. And uh, I'm like, start over? I like, can't understand mm-hmm. what he's saying. Yeah. Um, but it, when, I, when we're over there, he's like, huh, you have an American accent. Because obviously when he's here, he doesn't notice it because everyone has an American accent. But when I'm the only one with an American accent, he notices it. How funny. Right? But either way, I don't notice his anymore. Because <laughs> it's been so long. But um, All right. I think it's time for Ask Ashley. That's me. So, Ashley, tell us all about what's going on with the animals. Okay. Okay. So, um, the two stories today are both good. Yay. We haven't really talked about anything horrible lately, which... It's good. It's, hap- I'm sh- it's happening, but I haven't found anything compelling for me to talk about that's negative. So, fun stuff. I approve. Yeah. Hello. Oh. oh. Maybe <laughs> dinner first, Maki. <laughs> I got a dog between my legs. Okay. Um, so, the first story I'm going to talk about is from winknews.com, and the title is, Disney Parks Expand Vegan Food Options and They're Delicious, Just Don't Call Them Vegan. That last part, I was like, what? Do they, like, say, do not say vegan? It was a little bit misleading when it, I read that. I was like, oh, that seems negative. Like, what's that about? But basically, they're just, they're acknowledging their stuff as plant-based. Whatever. Okay. Whatever. Just give me it. Yeah. <laughs> so it that's kind of like why it's... also with no honey? Because I yes, feel like... It's, well, according to this, is just don't call these non-meat, non-dairy, non-honey options vegan. Oh, they're okay. going with plant-based. Okay. Because they do think it's like widely, more appeal, like, um, has a wild, broad, more a broad appeal, if I can spit that out. Yeah. Um, which I think is true. I mean, um, a lot of people find the term vegan too political or too overwhelming or too militant or whatever. I don't, but I can see why some people like that are uneducated on the subject would feel that way. So I think plant-based, I don't care what you call it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? As long as you're not eating As long as you're eating, yeah, vegan or plant-based or whatever, whatever, call it plant-based. I, 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 plant-based, I don't have a problem with that term. I think it's fine. Um, so I don't care. Um, now saying like personally, I say I don't like saying like fake chicken, fake this, fake that. I don't like that term because mm-hmm. that's saying it's like not real food. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't. I know some vegan um, brands use that term in their marketing, and they're fine with it. Hello, someone's not getting that. Got a little snaggle tooth right popping out at me. Hi, say it's okay. She's like, I need your love, Ashley. I need it. Um, yeah. So I, I that's the only kind of like vegan related term that comes off the top of my head that I don't I don't like. I don't mind, I mean, I don't mind any of the terms either. I just don't like it when I go somewhere because it's plant-based and it's actually not vegan because then I feel like it's oh, that's, misleading. Okay, yeah, that's not, yeah, no, that's not, that's not good. Okay. As far as the food, it should be interchangeable mm-hmm. with those names. Mm-hmm. Plant-based is vegan and vegan is plant-based, yep. in my opinion. I agree. Anyway, these are vegan options. They're, they're going to go with the plant-based phrase. Um... So yeah, they um, they're you know listening to like what everything what, what's happening in the world since they said that um, restaurant sales of alternative meat products jumped two hundred sixty eight percent last year according to the Di- Dining Alliance, and you know Disney says that they've heard from their visitors who are saying that they um, like on reservations like you, you know because obviously Disney caters to children um, so allergies is a huge concern for Disney. They're always asking, like, is there any allergies when you make um, reservations or anything like that? So, obviously, a lot of people are allergic to dairy and stuff like that. So, when people, even, like, non-allergy-related 
food requests come in like vegetarian or vegan, they're putting that in their reservation. So this is coming up a lot. They're seeing it. And people are like giving feedback, like in the, you know, the guest surveys, they grab you, oh, well, you know, can get your zip code and we have you been here before, blah, 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 blah. They're trying to get your information. A lot of people have been saying that they want more vegan options. And it, like they said, this has become a growing chorus of people asking the resorts to embrace a growing vegetarian and vegan appetite. So they'd be stupid to just ignore that. Um, and also they're saying like, yeah, like most of the people eating this way are younger and like that's the future of Disney is the younger people. So mm -hmm. they need to cater to them. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, that's all good to hear. They're not turning their blind eye into that. But mm -hmm. I have seen it improving even the last couple of times I've went. When you say Disney, are you referring to both Disneyland and Disney World? So this particular is about Disney World. They said that they are going to be rolling out a similar thing at Disneyland. I think it's this at the end. This is a pretty comprehensive article. So mm -hmm. if you want to know a lot about it, um, like they really talk about like the the really exciting dishes that they're gonna have like at different uh, different parks, like it's at, at specific like restaurants in the park. You can like read all about it, but they, they actually go into like ones they're really excited about. Um, but I think it says Disneyland will get its plant based push this spring. And properties in Europe and Asia have many plant-based options, but no current plans to overhaul their menus. Mm -hmm. So uh, Euro Disney, which is in Paris, and then the one, I'm not sure where the one in Asia is, but there is a one in Asia. Um, so they are not going to be going there at this point. But the two big Disney properties, they will be. Um, <clears throat> so they did talk about um, that it's more, like it's one thing to serve like hummus and carrot sticks, but they wanted to invest in like, like things that, are reminiscent of meat and chocolate and pastries and ice cream because that's what vegans eat. You know, we still eat, enjoy those textures and flavors. We just don't want the cruelty that comes with it and the health rep repercussions, of course. Mm -hmm. So they said, like, you know, we don't want to just give them, like, vegetables and, like, fruit. Like, that's not a vegan option, like, really. Yeah. One that I'm, I wouldn't be satisfied with, I guess. And no one um, probably. Yeah. So basically said that a lot of their, like, um, they have an in-house labor lab. And they, in-house flavor lab. Oh, cool. And they went to, so like their chefs kind of, or like traditional chefs, so they weren't like taught a lot about plant-based food, like plant-based cooking when they went to culinary school. So basically they went to a bunch of vegan restaurants in New York and Philadelphia and kind of like started like asking questions and like trying different things and getting ideas. So they really like tried to do like their research, like um, R&D for it. So that was kind of how they got the ideas for some of the more like impressive dishes that they have. Not just like veggie burger, you know, with lettuce and tomato, literally like Amy's patty with, you know, just like bare, you know, bare minimum requirements. Right. Mm -hmm. They really wanted to like step it up. Good. So, um, there, and then it just goes on and on to tell you about, um, all the different kind of dishes. They know that they, I've seen a lot of, um, popping up at the new star Wars, area of the park um they have a lot of stuff obviously everyone's visiting that area because the brandy part of the park so they're pushing a lot of cool vegan stuff there vegan food um but yeah it just goes on and tells you about all the kind of exciting ones at like hollywood studios and just all just these different ones um so uh, yeah it's real exciting because like i am a disney fan and i remember like even in the I mean, obviously, like you, people like you have been vegan for a very long time. I mean, I've been vegan eight years this year. Yeah. And I was vegetarian five years before that. So even going to Disney World when I was vegan, like when I lived in Florida, and then obviously being here, going to Disneyland, five years ago, we would be bringing our own food in. Because there really yeah. just wasn't anything good. I mean, there was one veggie burger in, like, Magic Kingdom mm -hmm. at, like, one of the main, like, the main strip restaurants, like Town Hall or something. That was like basically it. And you know, it was like, like it's, it was like a bare bones kind of thing. It was like you ate cause you were hungry. It wasn't like very good, you know? Yep. So we used to pack sandwiches and we used to like go to like one of the little like outdoor areas and we get a table and we had our sandwiches and chips and stuff like that's what we did. And like the last couple of times I've had, I've went to the parks, like I've had really good food. Like I talked about it. I went a year ago to Disney World, back to the Disney parks over there. And we had really good food in the parks. And now they're just stepping up even more. Like, where there's going to be a lot more. Like, every place is going to have something. So, um, yeah, it's really good news for me because I like Disney. I like going. And they make yeah. cute food. Like, like mouse-shaped food yeah. and stuff like I that. Yeah, I do love my... 
the the Disney the Your mouse Mickey pretzel. pretzels. But last time I know, I got some slack from you or flack from you. Slack, flack, both work. Flack? I don't know. I think flack. Why? Okay. What because they? I got the I just got the big regular the pre, it was a normal pretzel so, uh, shape, but it was uh-huh. jumbo. And you were oh. like, not a Mickey one? Yes. I always get the Mickey one. That's true. It was just, I wanted more pretzel than the Mickey could give me <laughs> at that time. And so I got the jumbo. I had a cold and I That's wanted my pretzel said. and I wanted a lot of pretzel. Yeah. Guess what? Minnie was stepping out on the Mickey pretzel and going and getting the jumbo pretzel that day. I mean, it's true. I would rather have a smaller amount of food if I could get it to be cute. I mean, nothing <laughs> would have stopped me from getting two of the Mickey ones, I guess. But, um, but anyway, yeah, I got the big one. I strayed. I'm sorry. I strayed. Yeah. You also it won't happen you again. Got, didn't you get the big pretzel when you went to the German restaurant? Yeah, but they didn't too? have a Mickey option. <laughs> but that was fun too. I think you just like a big we, pretzel. Yeah, I do. I do. I have to admit. Yeah. And when we got the one at uh, Hinderhof, um, I like held it. Like it was like big as a steering wheel. I held it and I was like telling them I was driving with them and the people next to us like laughing. <laughs> and then they ordered one. I was like, this is a fun pretzel. This is like, it gives you a lot of bait for your buck because you can like play charades with it, and then you eat it. So, <laughs> yeah, so good job, Disney, for listening to your, um, you know, your guests that are vegan and vegetarian and want to go there and eat. I want to eat, you know. I'm so excited, like, that Disney World at Disney, uh, Magic Kingdom Disney World, they do have vegan ice cream. They have Tofuti. Mm. Um, and that's good. I always get that when I go. I like to have it. They have that at Disney. Last time I checked, they didn't have it at Disneyland. So, anyway, good job, Disney. Happy to see that. Yay. I want to know, like, I want somebody to make a list of all of the Disney parks in the whole world and say which one is the most vegan. Has the most, uh, well, there is DisneylandVegan.com. I think that's the website. And they cover Disney. I don't know if they do the European one and, like, Asia one because I've never had, I've never, we were thinking about going to Euro, Euro Disney and people were like, it's horrible, don't go. Oh, uh, really? But. Wait, why? It's just because it's not as good. It's just not mm, good. Okay. But. I don't Japan know if that one is supposed to be good. That one I do. I really know nothing about. Is it Japan? Okay. I don't know anything about that one. Okay. Um, Tokyo. But Disney. like when we were in Par- we were in France last year. I was like, maybe we should go to Euro Disney for a day. And people don't like it generally, but it is very Beauty and the Beast centric because it's in Paris, uh, France. Mm, and so that's thing. what you I would wear love because I and the Beast yeah I love Beauty and the Beast. So I'm thinking maybe for me it would be great. Yeah. But for the general Disney person, maybe not as good. I don't know. Maybe when I go back next time, I'll go. Um, but I mean, anyway. for research purposes, yeah, you, you kind of purely. But yeah, Disney. I think DisneylandVegan.com. I think Disney World Vegan. Whatever, just search for it. They have it's a whole website for vegan options at the Disney parks. I know for sure the U.S. ones, mm-hmm. and they have like every all of them. Like it's great, great resource. Um, yeah. So the next story is from Veg News, and I'm sure everybody's heard about this because it's like blew up everybody's Instagram. I'm oh, sure. Oh, even you, I've. Yeah, I was gonna say I, even you. I'm sure. <laughs> Um, so the title is Joaquin Phoenix vegan Oscar speech will go down in history. So last month I believe we talked about how all of the award and, ceremonies Joaquin, were having vegan menus. Yeah, right? we we're going like vegan for the food, um, and Joaquin Phoenix was a part of that that happening. And so of course the Oscars went like ninety percent vegan or something like that. And so Joaquin Phoenix won Best Actor for for Joker. Did you see that? Mm-mm. Yeah. Okay. I saw in the theater. And cause that's a Batman fan. He loves like the Batman verse okay. universe. So we went to see it, and I think this goes for a lot of vegans. I'm gonna talk about this movie for a minute. <laughs> he won Best Actor for it, so I think it, you know it doesn't make sense for us to talk about it. Um, and his performance in it, he's a vegan, and I think a lot of vegans have one of the reasons they are led to veganism is because they have a high level of empathy. I know I do. Mm-hmm. Um, some people are higher than others, but I think we, vegans in general tend to have a higher level of empathy and it was extremely hard for me to watch that movie because of that. Oh. I, cause it had, it was suffering. upsetting. Yeah. Yes. He, his character, this is like a Joker prequel basically. It's how he becomes the Joker. Mm-hmm. And it's for me personally, I, it was heartbreaking to watch mm. cause he like, it was just, it was just. Just not disturbing in like a traditional sense, but it was disturbing. Like the, he, he seemed very like not well, and mm-hmm. like the way people treated him was upsetting to me. Aww. And then he goes crazy, and then he turns into a villain, obviously, mm-hmm. and does horrible things. But um, you definitely like feel bad for him. I mean, it was it was I like held back tears the whole time because it starts out right at the beginning 
where he like gets like attacked by these kids, mm. like these little hoodlums, and yeah. he's it's it's it's, it's it's pitiful the whole thing. It was so sad. Um, so I definitely I wasn't even thinking Oscar when I left that because I'm like, oh, this is like a comic book movie. But now they're starting to get yeah popular. It's not the yeah they're get, they're getting taken more seriously. But yeah, so I wasn't shocked when he was nominated and that he won because he did a really good job in that. You definitely should watch it, but be don't watch it. If you want to feel great after. Yeah, no. I don't want to watch it. You will feel the feelings. But it's a very good movie. Like, I would recommend it. But for someone that has high empathy, it could be difficult to watch. So, but it was a, he did amazing because he, you know, got me to feel that way. Because mm-hmm. he did such a good job, right? Like, I felt his his <laughs> suffering. I know. Are you trying to make me feel better because I'm sad about <laughs> his character being mean? Like, Macchiato just being... climbed onto Ashley's lap yeah, to give her yeah, comfort. Yeah, she feels my pain. <laughs> Um, okay, yeah, so he did, he did really, really good. She's, I want to go. But I don't want get to. Well, no well. one wants you. Hold on, she's oh, caught shoot. up. Hold on, she's caught up. There we go. <laughs> oh. No one there wants go. you on their lap. Um, so big. Yeah, so she was really good. He, she, he. <sighs> Joaquin Phoenix was very good in it. Anyway. Pronouns are annoying anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, so he won Best Actor. And um, it, he used his speech to basically talk about um, inequality, focusing on animal rights. So I'm like, this is like, this is one of the best actor, like best actress, best actor, like, and like for the best film. It's like one of the most watched speeches of the year. Is that how long the speeches normally are? I've never seen one. You get a lot of time when you win the, the three big ones, like, mm-hmm. or four big ones, I should say, like best picture, best director. Best female, like, best, like, actor and best actress, you get, like, like, a while, a long time. You get more time than uh, previous peep winners will get. Not winners, like, the nominees for different categories. Have you seen other people's speeches before? Yeah. And I watched Rami Malek's last year because I really wanted him to win. What do they usually talk about? Something, like, thanking a lot of people. Okay. You know, that's very typical. Um, but, like, Rami Malek, last year he won for Bohemian Rhapsody, and obviously he was talking about... Like, he is the son of an immigrant. He's, like, first-generation American. Um, and tell that he won this award by telling the story of a a gay man who was, like, living his life authentically at a time when it wasn't okay to do that. Okay. Because it was about Freddie Mercury, you know? So they usually, like, make a point. Like, you know, yeah. usually these performances have a lot of context behind them. That's why they win. Right. That's why they're so impactful, mm-hmm. right? So there's usually, like... Something important to say about the performance, right? right? So his was that, like, portraying Freddie Mercury's life. And then this um, Joker, I mean, it wasn't directly related, but I could see why he could pull this off so well. Because he's vegan, so I think he does high empathy. So he mm-hmm. could very empathize with this person's, the Joker's, like, suffering. Right. So um, it does get political a lot. Mm-hmm. Or social social issues or whatever. A lot of people more now, like more so in recent years, since I, you know things have gotten so kind woke. of muddled and people stuff. Are more woke. People are taking that opportunity, like when they know, it, like the world is watching, to like say what they think and mm-hmm. what they, everything. So um, yeah, so in the link there is a, a, a in the in the show notes there's a link to the article which has the video embedded, so you can watch the full um, thing there the full speech and he just talks about and he he talks in general of um exploitation about like just you know race gender and speciesism but he also like takes direct aim at the dairy industry and he says we feel quote we feel entitled to artificially inseminate a cow when she gives birth we steal her baby even though her cries of anguish are unmistakable and then we take her milk that's intended for her calf we put it in our cereal and 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 coffee coffee and cereal um and he just talks about I mean, he just, he's just, it was very good. He just talks about, like, making changes for sentient beings and the environment. Um, and it was a great, it was a great speech. So, mm-hmm. um. It was so good. And it actually, uh, and then, of course, after that, he went right to a, um, as he did, I think, with the Golden Globes. He, he goes right after these, he always goes to an animal rights protest. Uh, yes. uh, well, he went, the last one, it was like a, the, the. Um, I forget what it's called, but it's like the pigs vigil where you like go and like stand outside the trucks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I forget the name of the group. Um, I just, yeah, I just split my mind. Um, but yeah, so he, people, I mean, people were listening and I think, I think I read that, um, what's her name? 
from girls, Leah Dunham said that his speech made her go vegan. Oh, cool. So people, awesome. yeah, whether, you know, whether she was saying that or she's going to do that or whatever, that's great. So it's impactful. So, nice. um, yeah, congratulations to him. I'd like to see vegans doing good things and, you know. Yeah, and you, like, it. having the ability to communicate to that many people is yeah. huge. You never have that, like, I mean, it's rare for anyone to even win, like, you know, like, statistically winning a word that big and winning it twice, so you better use your five minutes they give you for whatever is important to you. Yep. Whether it's just thanking people that got, like, helped you accomplish that, that's fine, too, but a lot of people... But, like, saving many lives, obviously, is a better use of that yeah. time. Yeah, you know, some people don't feel like it's appropriate to put their personal feelings out there for it. And I understand. Like, that's fine. If but it, with veganism, do that. at but that point, he, it becomes not he, personal anymore. He, you know... Like, it's That's no one of the things his life personal. is dedicated to. You it's know? now... So. Um, everybody's imprisoning people, and that's not personal anymore. Yeah, so congratulations, Joaquin, and I thought I just wanted to bring that up, and if you hadn't had a chance to see, watch his speech, it's in the show notes, so. Yeah, so, if I wasn't on Instagram, I don't think I would have been. Oh, it was like, there was even a meme about, it was like every vegan's Instagram, like, feed today, and it was just like <laughs> all these, like, it was like a bursting of, like, his picture, like, it was all these different versions of his picture, of like, giving his, his speech, so, yeah, it was everywhere, everybody so. was talking about it. Um, so Robin, what's been happening at the dollhouse? Ooh, the dollhouse has been delicious. Mm. I mean, besides the brunch that we just ate, which was also delicious. It was. The brunch we just had, actually the patties that went in our breakfast sandwiches are my air fryer omelets from my website. So those are already on the website. Mm. Um, okay. And so the new things that I've been making, I made sauerkraut hummus which for anyone who hasn't made their own hummus, I can understand why. I it's not. so cheap to buy it that why would you need to make it? It's like it's everywhere you can buy it any at any store. You can always find it. I usually tend to make things that are either difficult to obtain or are expensive to obtain already made. But the benefit of making your own hummus is it is cheaper, which is hard to believe because buying hummus is very cheap. But it's also very customizable. You can put well, yeah. You, in it. you can't walk in and get a sauerkraut hummus no, from I don't anywhere. Think you can. So yeah, at least not as not current days. Maybe it'll catch on and become a thing now. Uh, but yeah, I'm a huge fan of sauerkraut, and I make it regularly, I so I always sauerkraut. have it laying around. Um, so I made this one with sauerkraut and dill, and it was delicious. Highly recommend it. Um, so that's on the blog, and also I usually make my hummus fat free I guess like I don't add oil and when you buy it at the store it has a really lot of oil which of course makes it way more delicious so if you're into a, a more delicious fattening hummus you can just add oil and it's even more delicious nice um, I should put that on my website actually <laughs> uh okay and then we talked about last month how I made the koala cupcakes for the fundraiser for the Australia fires and I Got to post that recipe, so that's on the blog now. Very cute. Cute um, for good cause. Yeah, they were very cute. And that would be a good, cute for a cause. That could be a good little name for something. It could be. Yeah. Put that in your pocket. Or put okay. that in your pipe and smoke it. <laughs> <laughs> Save that for me in your brain. Okay. Can I tap into it later, please? Yep. Um, like a tea party fundraiser? Yeah. Ooh, I have to tell you. Anything cute. Anything cute for a cause. <laughs> the possibilities are endless. Uh, so the recipe that I've been working on that's not quite up there yet, but it will be by the time this podcast goes live, um, is like a version of the shamrock shake. Do you know about the shamrock mm -hmm. shake? Yeah. Apparently it's trademarked by McDonald's, so I wasn't yeah. allowed to call it a shamrock shake. But I called it a mint shake, mm. and... I made it with not a moo ice cream, but you can make it with any vegan ice cream. You should cream. be like Sham Shamrock Shake. Yeah. <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> You're great, Ashley. Or Shamrock Shape Sham. Or something <laughs> like that. Put sham in there. Um, it's a sham. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so anyway, it's just a milkshake. If you're not sure how to make a thick milkshake, then it could be good. The secret is hardly put any milk in. The end. <laughs> the end. Come back next week, next month for some more groundbreaking tips. Uh, so that's all I've been making, I think. Oh, I did make a really good coconut cake. 
that I've recipe eh. tested. I know you hate coconut. Yeah. I do. I love coconut. I don't like shredded coconut, which I've yeah. said a million times. But yeah. I'm sure there was shredded coconut. There definitely yep. was mm-hmm. shredded coconut in it. Um, and I will be posting a recipe at some point, but I don't know if it'll be out in time. So I'll wait and talk about it later. Yeah. Um, you have to wait for the ant- anticipation. Let the anticipation build. Yeah. Did you go to your high tea for... Yeah, um, I did. Oh, you did? Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, well, I want to hear about that. But also, I want to mention that for Valentine's Day, I went to Cybel's, which is a omni-Italian restaurant in San Francisco. That Heavy has, vegan. Yeah, that yeah. has a really large vegan menu. That's great. Um, and I got... A, they, they were making all of their pizzas heart-shaped for Valentine's Day. So I got a heart-shaped mac and cheese pizza with Beyond Sausage and mushrooms. And it was so good. And for dessert, we had red velvet beignets. I had their unicorn ones. I've there. had the unicorn yeah. ones, too. I think the red velvet ones are better yeah. because they have chocolate. And you know how I feel about that. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah. So, if you're ever in San Francisco or if you live nearby and you haven't been to Cybels yet, I highly recommend going. Sorry that it's not going to be a heart-shaped pizza, but any shaped pizza is delicious Yeah, there. it's really good. Um, so yeah, that's all I've been eating. Can you tell me about your Valentine's tea? Uh, yeah, I didn't make any notes on it, so I'll just be brief, I guess. So we went to, Matt and I went to Mirror's Tea Room, um, for their Valentine's Day tea. We went on the 15th, so the day after Thanksgiving, whip, um, Valentine's Day. And it was actually, it was really good. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think, uh, if I can just remember off the top of my head, they did the, like, the savory plate was basically, um... They did the, the 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 pear balsamic thing, you know. That's like always paired together on like little toast. That was like one of the savories. Okay. The other one was like a turn. It was like a, a, a it looked like a turnover, like kind of like a pastry with like um, it's like a sun dried tomato type of thing inside. Good. That was, was very that was very shaped? good. Hmm? Heart shaped? No, that wasn't heart shaped. Okay. Um, and then there was like a the the traditional kind of like cucumber cream cheese sandwich. Heart shaped. No, circle. Boo. <laughs> <laughs> there was nothing heart-shaped until the top. Ugh, and okay. I think there was only one heart-shaped thing. Wow. Um, Rude. There was the, uh, one other savory thing, and I can't remember what it was. Sorry. I can't remember what the other savory sandwich was. Um, then the uh, the scones were just your average. Delicious. I love a scone, but there wasn't anything too wild about it. Not heart-shaped? Not <laughs> Heart shaped, um, and then like the dessert tray, they had a very pretty. I have a picture. They had a very pretty like sugar cookie that was heart shaped, and it was like kind of like it looked like a watercolor like Ooh, design like on that. it. Yeah, I'll, I'll show you a picture. And then the other, um, ew, let me find it, show it to you because this is. There's it's not a great picture, picture, but you can see how it looks. Oh yeah, okay. I don't know why it looks so bad there. Um, That's cool. Okay, so. Let me refresh my memory here. Okay. And then on the top, there was that heart-shaped sugar cookie that was very, very pretty. And they had a raspberry cheesecake circle. Um, and then they had... Which could have been so easy for it to be mm, a heart. There's a, lo- there's a lot of missed oppor- heart opportunities there, I think. <laughs> Everything was great, but yeah, if you're looking for your heart-shaped stuff, that wasn't really a thing. Um, they had a lot of fruit on there, uh, like watermelon, some one blackberry... And some strawberries. And then there was um, two cupcakes. I actually haven't eaten all of them yet. We had to oh take a gosh. bunch of stuff home. Wow. Um, so I'm not sure what, even what the flavor is. Um, and there was a, what's just like a little, like a truffle? Like two little truffles, I guess. Okay. They're just little balls. Maybe that would, they would be a truffle. Yeah. Um, actually, one was like berry, a berry. But I couldn't put my finger on what kind of berry it was. Ooh. It wasn't like super obvious hmm. inside. It was like a berry puree type of filling okay. um thicker it wasn't like runny or anything yeah, yeah. um but it was good and then there was like another one and I can't put my finger on what that was it was it was like a thick like something that was like put in the blender it wasn't pureed it was like thicker than that um and I'm not describing it very well but I, I ate the rest of it I had half of it last night and half of it this morning I still couldn't put my finger on what the filling was it was good but I just couldn't you had half of a truffle who are you yeah <laughs> but I, I had, like, others. I, I was just, like, trying to get as much in me as possible. And there was little shortbreads that were, like, rectangles. Oh, my <laughs> God. Um, so annoying. So that was basically it, I think. Um, we had – I tried and get a new tea there that was raspberry vanilla. 
and I put the uh, oat vanilla creamer in it. It was delicious together. I never put creamer in my tea, and I just thought I'd try it out. Yeah. It was delicious. Love it. But I could see how, like, tea being, like, healthy and everything could turn into, like, not a good situation with all that creamer. Oh, yeah. That's all my teas. Kind of like, yeah. All my teas. I drink all my teas without anything. (laughs) Um, But it was a fun, it was a fun little. Yeah. Good. Uh, walk on the wild side, shall I say? Um, but it was very good with her half a truffle. Yeah, <laughs> so wild. No, believe me, I packed away everything else. Um, that was all. I was like, do it. do it. I could only get halfway through after everything else. Um, I tried. I love their maple. Uh, what is their their maple tea? Oh, I don't know maple. I don't think I've ever gotten it. Something maple. It's, it's, it's like one, we, we always pick something else and then we get that maple one because that maple one's so good. That one didn't oh. work as well with that creamer, but it was, it, that, I love that maple tea they have there. Um, so yeah, it was really good. All right. It was a nice little. Not enough hearts, but delicious. It, it, yeah, it was, it was delicious. So okay. I was happy with it. Um, I've been having a conversation. I've, I'm in the beginnings of a conversation with the chef at Heyo and I think we're going to have an event there, a tea party event. He said he'd be open to making bite-sized everything. For what? What do you mean for what? I don't know. Anything. Like Why does there have to be an occasion? Like, you mean, like, just to have something there? Yeah. I'm going to, like, decorate the whole place, and, like, everything's just going to be, a, like, a... I didn't know if this was, like, a vent for something. No, like, I mean, not uh, yet. Oh, I've, okay. I've just brought it up to him, and he was like, yes, let's do it. So, we'll see. How, oh. We'll see what wow. comes of it. But okay, nice. Maybe we'll a fan make of it tea even better than weirs. Who knows? Um... Okay, cool. Yeah. Is it time for Wagger Whimper? Yeah. All right. Here's Wagger Whimper, our segment where we talk about something we tried for the first time and we decide if it made us Wagger Whimper. You go first. Okay. So mine's kind of going to be a similar, like almost a repeat from last week. Um, we I talked about the from the ground up uh, sea salt flavored tortilla chips last month. And so I was rushing through the grocery store. You know me. So supermarket sweep out in 20 minutes. I don't care what, how much I have to get. 20 minutes is all the time I'm giving myself. I can't, can't get it in 20 minutes. It's, it's going to leave it behind. If you knock people over, it's not your fault. Get your kids out of the way. <laughs> not my problem. Um, and so I was grabbing the chips, and I grabbed a different flavor. I didn't realize. Hmm. So I Wait, ended up what getting... what was last month's flavor? Sea salt. Okay. So I ended up... I didn't even realize this until like I got home. Like I didn't even see it at all. Um, so I grabbed the nacho flavor. Nice. And so I was like, well, okay, well, we'll eat these. And they were actually very good, too. Which do you like better? They're very different because obviously the nacho is much more flavorful. Like it's a stronger flavor than the mm-hmm. sea salt. I guess I would go. It is tough. It is tough, but I would say sea salt. I think. Ooh, weird. Yeah. Okay. Um, but from the ground up, cauliflower nacho flavored tortilla chips also made me wag. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I went to Costco with my stepmom, who has a Costco membership, and I do not. So. Always happen. Those poor people I have Costco and like. <laughs> Um, let's see, Sam's Club memberships. Mm-hmm. Oh, you never know. Who, you don't know who your real friends are. You know, <laughs> so everyone's like, "Hey, let's hang out. Do you mind if we stop by Costco <laughs> and then drop me off at home?" Yeah, <laughs> good hangout. Good hangout. <laughs> yeah, so that's me, fair weather friend, Costco friend. <laughs> um, and I saw something in on the sale section that was organic and vegan, so I got it. And it was the Annie Chun's baked seaweed crisps. I don't, oh no. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I, would, I don't think I would like these. Okay, do you ever eat seaweed things? I've had, the, all, everything I've had, I don't like try them regularly because all the ones I've had I don't like. Okay, so yeah, you're just not. A I'm just not. Person. I just don't like seaweed, but um, I'm such a seaweed person that I would go to the Korean market on El Camino and Lawrence, and I would get the big sheets of it. Just I would get like they had a sale where if you bought nine packs, you get the tenth one free. It's it's like a hundred dollars. I mean, so much seaweed, <laughs> and I would just eat the whole all of it. I just eat it all, just, just seaweed plain. Buy it- Plain? I mean, they toast it and put salt on it or something. Oh, my God. It's delicious. Um, so I'm a seaweed fan. As a seaweed fan, the Annie Chung's baked seaweed crisps were good, but they were slightly too sweet. I don't think that they should have added any sweetener. I think they should have only been savory. Um, however, they still made me wag. <laughs> Ooh, we thought you were, we were going one way. <laughs> and then she tricked you and said they wag because you was, thought we were going to have a whimper there. I knew because it was in the, the wag section yeah. of the thing. But no uh, you, you no listeners at home, we got, got to throw a curveball there. <laughs> <laughs> if, we, if I was in charge there, they would taste different, but they were still good. 
Um, yeah. Anything else? It's ba- yeah. The the evaluation is based on what it is, not what you think it should be. Yes. Because yeah. I mean, I, that might change a lot of things if we said, if I were doing it, yeah. everything would taste worse if I was doing it. So Just like you can't compare current boyfriends to past boyfriends. <laughs> <laughs> Bringing it back to before the podcast started <laughs> recording. <laughs> uh, okay, well, that's episode 52. Can you guys believe it? Um, we're, we tried to have our podcast available to all of the places that we know about. Um, but if you know anybody who's been trying to find it on a platform on that we're their, not on, yeah, on their let chosen us know. listening. Yeah, there's so many new ones coming out all the time, and honestly, we can't keep up with them all. I'm too old for that. You guys, have, I'm I'm counting on you listeners to keep me up to speed on this stuff. Um, and if you ever want to get in touch with us to say that we suck or to say that we're <laughs> awesome, you can send us an email. Our email address is dolls and donuts, all spelled out at gmail.com. And we have a website where you can listen to maybe the most recent episode. Three. Maybe the last one. three. The last three. Yeah. Ashley knows. <laughs> it's at dollsanddonuts.com. And yeah, that sounds good. You can link to our social media from there too. Yeah. So if you want to find me, you can find me at veganadventure.com, which has sorely been sorely neglected. Sorry about that. Maybe I'll get my shit together at some point. It's for my own good, really. She's out living her life. I reference that back often. Oh, you know, that's the only reason I made it. I'm going to reference it because I'm going to go to London for my birthday, so I want to see where I should go. So I'll be referencing Ooh, it. Okay. Hope it's up to, I hope your London section uh, is up to date. Yes. Okay. It is. Okay, good. It is, yes. Okay. I good. think, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I am very confident in my answer. Um, <laughs> I need to get a few things updated. New York. Did I finish? I, I don't know what the hell's going on. How about that? Um... I just need to get it. I need to look at it and see what I'm missing uh, for my own sanity. Uh, and then also I'm on Instagram at Ashley the Vegan. Mm-hmm. And I'm everywhere at Vegan Dollhouse. And maybe I can convince Ashley the Vegan to post some of her pictures from her Valentine tea on I, our Dolls and Donuts Instagram. Yeah, I just took like two quick ones. Because <laughs> I was like, give me it. Give me it now. <laughs> Sometimes the camera can't eat first, okay? Well, yeah, the one I took of that, that cookie... I barely, I like barely I can even barely see it because I just like took it so fast and then put my phone down and it was like looks like <laughs> and I here's was trying a to catch it in my intru- face like a, with the cookie in my mouth. That's like I tried to was trying to take a picture of a home intruder as they ran out of the house. Like it's not great quality. <laughs> I didn't get their license plate number, but it sure was delicious. <laughs> so I don't know that one I won't share. But uh, yeah, I'll show. I'll show. I just took a picture of the the T Rex. So okay, so we'll share that and. Have a good change. Is it Patty? Pat, it's T or D. Which one's right? Patty. D. 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 Yeah. Patty. Right, say T. It's wrong. Yeah, it's not uh, T. It's D. Okay. Happy, Happy Patty's, Patty's Day. Patty's Day. Do you say Saint? Can I say Saint? You say Saint. yeah. It's Saint Patty's Day. Saint yeah. Patty's Day. Okay. Is that, did I say not say Saint? You didn't say Saint. I said Happy Patty's Day. You did. You said Patty's Day. Yeah, it's supposed to be D, right? But I did, I left the Saint off. Yeah. Okay. So happy Paddy's Day. (laughs) Happy Paddy's Day. Happy Saint Paddy's Day. I'm trying to say it with an Irish accent. I can't. Happy Saint Paddy's Day. Hee hee. I know I did it last time. That's the only way I can put the Irish exclamation point on it. You have to have the hee hee. -hee. (laughs) I'm Ginger. Thanks for listening. Bye. Bye. Bye.